Hi, this is Cheryl Wally. Welcome to my video, Painting Abstract Figures Using Acrylic and Mixed Medium. In the next 25 minutes, I will show you the process that I use from beginning to end, prepping the canvas, developing an abstract underpainting, selecting a composition, right through to the finishing touches and all the pushes and pulls in between. It's quick. It's a lot shorter than what it takes to actually create the painting, but I think it'll give you a good solid look at the process that I use, and I hope that it'll help you in your creativity. If you have any questions at the end, my contact information is there, and I hope that you'll give me a shout out. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I'm going to begin by showing you how I prep my canvas when I am beginning an expressive abstract figure painting. Um, I do this in, sometimes in different orders, but basically it's um, using the same techniques. Start off obviously with a um, blank canvas. I use these gallery wrapped canvases that have a one and a half inch side. You can use any flat surface. You can use a board, um, paper, <clears throat> anything for this. But it's important because we're going to be putting so much product on um, the canvas to be able to have it sealed and more importantly to give it some color and some design because in my experience it gives it energy. Often, I just finished a painting and I have some colors left on my palette and I'm going to use those. And instead of wasting them and wiping them away, usually I don't care if there's uh, hairs or things that get in the painting because it just adds texture, but I'm going to start out with a nice clean surface. And I'm also because I have so many colors mixed on my palette already, I'm going to try to be careful not to blend them too much because I don't want to end up with a brown beginning. So, nice and thin, nice and loose. We don't want too much texture at this point because then it makes it harder. I'm going to be adding collage later and it makes it harder to manipulate the surface if you have too much texture going in. It starts to dictate some of the decisions you might make. So um, that's a good start. And while this paint dries, which uh, it, will, it will dry fairly quickly, one of the other things I often use is um, either hard or soft charcoal. To, to help me with an abstract design or any one of a number of other um, pens, pencils that are compatible with water-based medium. Sky's the limit, really. So that is using my soft charcoal. And you, you are probably thinking that this is going to smear and you're, you're right about that. I'll show you how I manage that. This is very intuitive. It's an intuitive process that is much like art therapy, I believe. Now, after I put on the charcoal, the charcoal will smear and I need to be able to seal it so that it doesn't muddy up the rest of the steps that I'm gonna take. And one of the things I use, I have a big container here, but you, this comes in all kinds of small containers as well, is the, an acrylic gloss gel or matte gel. I like the gloss gel because it's transparent. Matte gels have a little bit of a, um, a cloud to them and they don't dry quite as transparent. 
You can take care of the gloss if you don't like a glossy finish at the end of the painting with what you use to varnish. But I'll use a little bit of this on my palette knife. Let me set this over here. And just make sure that I cover, see I think that's really cool. As soon as that gloss gel sets, I don't want too much of that on there either, really. I've used quite a bit. You can use a thinner. There's a product by Liquitex that is a, a gel and varnish, and it's thinner, and that really works well. I just happen to have this today, so this is what I'm using. Okay. Got to make sure I don't gum up the sides too much or I'll have big ridges when I'm finished and that won't be very pretty. Before I set this aside to let it dry, I'm just going to add some other color spots. Once again, I'm cleaning off my my palette that I used in a painting yesterday. When I do this, I'm thinking of different sized objects touching the edges in different places so that everything isn't, so that there's variety, so that I don't have too much repetition or um, sameness, and it adds to the interest of a finished painting. Now this is not, most of this is not, a, if any of it, uh, will show when I'm finished. I and never know, sometimes I fall in love with an area or some and that's dangerous too, but sometimes an area works and it ends up staying in the final painting. See how they start to lose? Oh, I like that. If I had this on an easel, I might let that spray that and let that drip like this. Try to keep somewhat neat. Drip marks are kind of fun. So this is a wet process. And of course I'm working in acrylics. Uh, it looks like a mess at the moment, but I'm not disliking it. And put some other marks in there. I'm using a Listo pencil, which is a, a wax marker. You can get them in several colors. This is a box of um, reusable or replaceable, I should say, LEDs. Um, I use black a lot, but they they come in all colors. I happen to grab a red one I'm gonna be careful about putting too much on here because I want to I was losing a little bit of the vibrancy and it, if personally if I don't have a fair amount of energy on my canvas when I start to do my um, take a look at the composition I want for my figurative work 
if I if there's not enough vibrancy or energy there, I just um, I have trouble being inspired. So this is about painting loosely and expressively. So I believe you need to start out loosely and expressively, and that's what I'm thinking about as I do this. And I really like this yellow. I've been painting with a lot of yellow lately, which for years I didn't paint with too much yellow. Go through stages. Yellow and Lavender make brown, and that's what's happening here. I'm creating some kind of a, a gray. So I'm going to leave it at that, let that dry, and then uh, come back and do the next step, which will be adding collage. Now I'm going to start adding some collage to my abstract. And I'm still going to be thinking in abstract form. I don't have an idea yet for my figurative piece that I'm going to put down here. I'm just playing with the, the canvas and the colors until I find something that I like. I will show you how I put on the paper and then uh, we'll start the, to design the composition. I use the gloss gel medium. I've put some on my palette over here. And I have decided, I've looked through a lot of my papers and I really like the way this black and white plays off. It has a real contemporary feel. And I got some just black and white prints and I tore it up. I prefer to have the organic or ragged edge as opposed to sharp edges, but um, you know, that's also a personal choice. I also, I, I don't usually use plain color paper, but I really liked this yellow. For some reason, I'm drawn to yellow this time. I'm not questioning, I'm just gonna go with it. Um, I, If you look at the abstract I did, I really wanted to get the feeling of lots of layers, and so I, built up, there's still fairly thin paint on here, but I built up different layers of designs and shapes and tried to balance the color somewhat. So I started off with a good, balanced, uh, fairly effective abstract painting. I mean, this is not something that I would put in a gallery and sell, but it works for an underpainting for sure. So I will show you how I put on the Okay, I get a little, I, again, I use my palette knife. I will put on some of the gloss gel, then put down my paper into the gloss gel, and I make sure that I rub the bubbles out. Doesn't need a lot, and I scrape it off so I don't have a lot of extra on my, you know, extra to contend with. It just takes longer to dry. As long as you've got it up, under and over, then that paper is sealed. And we're gonna have, there's gonna be more that's gonna go on here. Anyway, um, I, again, I'm gonna be overlapping shapes. So, took a little of my yellow. Um, try a, some of the satin. Simple as that. The other thing I'll be thinking about as I'm laying this paper down is um, I'm thinking also about how uh, I place it with regard to variety, sizes. See, I have different sizes and shapes and combinations and lay it, whoops, I didn't put any gel down under that. And that has a little paint on it. That's okay. It's 
Let's try a So I'm just building up layers again for interest. Everything's dry. I put on more collage and more underpainting than I sometimes do, but I was having fun with the abstract and so I didn't stop. But it took, um, I let it set overnight to be able to dry so that I could work better with it this morning. I stared at it for a while and I see a couple of images in there where I'd like to place them. I don't know if it's obvious. I took a chalk mark and outlined a figure here and a figure here and possibly a little figure there. And I'm going to indicate the neck and the face. This didn't have a lot of color up here at this time. Sometimes I have a lot of color where the face is going to go and I'll probably add some more of that later, but for now that's going to mark my spot for a head and a face and another one here. Oops. I find that if I mark where I want the faces to be and the heads then I don't get sidetracked later. I'm imagining this one looking down on this figure. She has a little bit of a long neck there. So that makes me feel like I'm working on a person. And then I'm going to do some negative space painting. Uh, I might have made that head a little bit too big. Thinking about the shoulders about there, and then possibly another figure down here. I can change my mind as I go along. I've mixed up some, a couple of light colored paints in blues, blues and different colored blues actually, and I'm going to just kind of paint in around it. I don't want to lose all this other color that's around the head. don't want to get too close and make the edges too tight yet. Yeah, see, I'm going to go over some of the edges of the collage. So, because there's a lot of great color in there, I don't want to lose it all. Just some need to define the figure and and I do that by not outlining but rather by kind of marking certain spots along the shape of the figure so I kind of know where I'm going. Skinny neck, huh? As you can see, I, I work all over the painting. I work everywhere on the painting. At the, instead of just one spot and then leave it. Okay, I see this figure. Hit 
it's too small if it's going to go with this other figure, isn't it? This will probably be a child. This also gives me a chance to clean up some of the areas that are pretty muddy. They don't look so muddy if, like this, I would call muddy right here. Um, but if it's surrounded, if it's up against some high intensity pure color, then it has a nice contrast. But if the whole painting looked like this, it wouldn't be very pleasing. Same with some of this up here. So, okay. Let's see. I'm going to work in the detail of the faces, if, if they have faces, if I'm not looking at them from behind. I'm going to look uh, or work in the detail a little bit later. Careful, 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 careful. And I don't lose some of that juicy color. And I like the way that this is fairly abstract. It's kind of a dreamy color palette. Okay. I'm going to have to. Since she's got so much blue in her dress, I'm going to have to give her something to different color to outline her dress there. All right, I'll keep working on this and lapse time and um, come back later.